In this episode of Darth Vader Explains, I'm going to explain to you why Zeno is one of the most hyped characters in all of manga history, and why he is nowhere near as powerful as fans think he is. Yeah, Zeno did destroy a couple of universes, and people think that he's so cool, Whis even says that there is no one above him, but in reality, he's nowhere near the top tier of power for fictional entities, and there's actually a mountain of evidence that goes to show that he's not nearly as powerful as even the fans make him out to be. There are a lot of YouTubers who go online and they basically say that because Zeno is destroying timelines that makes him fifth dimensional, but that's a bunch of hogwash, and there's evidence to show that he didn't even accomplish those feats. So let's get right into it. We all know that future Zeno came on the scene when Goku was trying to deal with Zamasu in the future timeline. When future Zeno arrives, Goku has to fill him in on what is going on. Now, if Zeno truly were this fifth dimensional being, he should be sitting outside of the timelines and just be looking at all of them and already know what's going on. The fact that he has to be filled in means far from omniscient, he's actually pretty ignorant. Then when we look at his supposed fifth dimensional feat of being able to destroy Trunks' future timeline, people say, oh, well, it's a fifth dimensional feat because he's destroying time, matter, and space. But is that really the case? Because after he destroys it, he's pretty much floating around in a void. Which means he didn't destroy the space, just the matter. And time ring be damned, because this was just a one-off scene in the manga that doesn't have any follow-up. If you notice, Goku's time machine is actually able to find him again. If the time machine is actually able to find him again, that means that time still exists. Because you would think, if the time itself had been destroyed, then when Goku hits that timeline in the computer, it should give him a 404 error and say that that timeline is not found, and he should not be able to find him. The fact that Zeno was able to be located again with the machine means that he did not destroy the time continuum. He merely just blew up all of the planets and turned them down into dust. Essentially, you could look at Zeno's Universe busting attack is basically a giant Hakai. He may eviscerate all the matter in that universe, but he's still leaving space and time behind. That is nowhere near a fifth dimensional feat. Then to make matters worse and even more face palm you look at, this supposedly transcendent being gets in the freaking time machine. You have to understand how nauseating that is to look at. If he's supposed to be a supreme being, he should be able to snap his fingers and travel into whatever timeline he wanted to. He should be able to do things kind of like maybe what the Beyonder or Thanos or Darkseid even could be able to do. But the fact that he needs a machine to get into a different timeline means that he himself is bound by time. Further proof of this is the fact that there were two of him. If there is a past version and a future version, that means that he himself is bound to time. He himself is constrained by time. There is no way that he is a fifth dimensional being or some sort of hyperdimensional creature if he himself has to obey the rules of time. Because here's the thing that's wrong with this. Merge Zamasu had a more impressive time feat when his entity was spilling into all of the other timelines. He was one entity whose existence was so potent that he was blebbing into all of the timelines at once. That's actually getting into a fourth dimensional feat there, but Zeno being bound by time, that is nowhere near the dimensionality that people on YouTube like to say that he has. Furthermore, he needed a freaking iPad to be able to watch the fight that was taking place between Dispo and Golden Frieza. Here's why that is problematic. That means he doesn't even have hyperdimensional reflexes. His reflexes were so slow, he needed assistive technology to be able to watch a fight. I'm a cyborg. I don't even need that. I'm a Sith Lord. I can just use the Force to perceive the fight going on. I, even I don't need technology, and I'm nowhere near as powerful as Zeno supposedly is. Maybe I should be the Omni King. Anyway, this makes no sense whatsoever when you think about the fact that he's supposedly the number one fighter, or the number one being in the universe, and his assistant 
Dai, the Dai Shinkan, the Grand Minister, is able to watch the fight without assistive technology. That means that in addition to being bound by time and being kind of stupid, he's also kind of slow. Now, here is how the Goku Black Saga should have ended if Zeno truly were a fifth dimensional being. When Goku pressed the Zeno button, that should have made the true one Zeno appear. No future Zeno. This should have been the very same Zeno that Goku met in the Universe 6 tournament. That Zeno should have said, Goku, I have been watching you this whole time, and now it is time for me to step in. You and Vegeta and your friends, go home, I'm gonna deal with this. And from there, Zeno should have tapped into his divine power and unfused merged Zamasu, then took away his immortality, and then killed them, just like this wonderful fan art right here displays. This is something that should have happened. This is what would have happened if we were truly dealing with a fifth dimensional being. Because we don't see Xena warp reality. All we see him do is destroy things. Which, in theory, if you gave Goku a powerful enough Kamehameha, there's no reason why Goku couldn't accomplish everything we've seen Xeno do. You see, when you look at the tier of fictional entities that are supposedly at the top of their universes, Zeno's actually close to the bottom. Pretty much all of the supernatural entities in the Marvel Universe on this page could all raffle stomp Zeno very badly. Spectre could probably one-shot him from the DC Universe. Hell, even the Ones from the Star Wars Universe might be able to warp Zeno's mind and bend his will. And last but not least, Eternal Sailor Moon could probably wipe Zeno out of existence. You see, Zeno is nowhere near as powerful as people make him out to be. He's not really a top-tier character. I would say Zeno is somewhere in the order of a Titan. He's more like Kronika from Mortal Kombat, or Darkseid, or Odin, or even Alduin from Skyrim. That's more or less the realm of power he occupies. He's halfway in between mortal and hyperdimensional, but he's not a truly hyperdimensional being. And that is why I say he is nowhere near as powerful as he's made out to be. And by extension, the Dragon Ball Super Universe is nowhere near as powerful as it is made out to be. I would argue that probably every character on this screen that is not Xeno could probably still one-shot the Dragon Ball Super Universe. Let me know what you think in the comments below.